how does your computer generate random numbers? For example, how come each time that I use the rand function in Excel, it generates a new number? Or let's step back. What is randomness really? And if we know what it is, how can we artificially create it? Hi, I'm Salman Razavi, and in this video, I will try to address those questions. We can think of many things whose behavior appear random to us. For example, turbulence in streams. The way molecules of water move and interact look random and chaotic. Meaning, if we can track the past movements of a parcel of water in a turbulent regime, we may not be able to predict the next move of it. So randomness is about a lack of predictability. A random event is unpredictable. If we take samples of a random event over time, we get a sequence of unpredictable numbers. Okay, suppose that I threw a die 20 times and here is the outcome. A sequence of 20 numbers, each an integer between 1 and 6. Plotting them doesn't show any sort of pattern to help us predict a next outcome. But how can we numerically test if they are random? An easy way is to look at the autocorrelation in this sequence. For example, lag1 autocorrelation is the correlation of a sequence with itself when lagged by one time interval. Or lag2 autocorrelation is its correlation with itself lagged by two time intervals. If we don't see any meaningful autocorrelation of any lag, then you might say the sequence is random. Okay, so back to our question. How does a computer generate those random numbers? Of course, it's not able to throw a die. In fact, our computers are deterministic, meaning if they do the same computation twice, they get you the exact same results. So the computations by our computers are absolutely predictable. To generate random numbers, we need a computer algorithm that while deterministic, can generate random appearing numbers. Let me show you an example algorithm called middle square method. The algorithm is given a seed number, which can be any arbitrary number, for example, with four digits. And then it squares that number and the result is an eight digit number. Then it drops the first two and the last two digits and gives us what remains as our first generated random number. Now we can reiterate this algorithm and take the new number as a new seed number and generate more random numbers. This little code in Python does that for us and generate many more random numbers. If we plot the results, we don't see any meaningful patterns that help us predict future numbers. And if we look at the autocorrelation structure at different lags, we don't find any significant autocorrelation. So the sequence of numbers is appearing to be random. But are they really random? Of course not, because they are fully predictable. All you need to know to reproduce exact same numbers is the algorithm and the seed number. Because of that, we typically call these random appearing numbers as pseudo-random numbers. The middle square method that I just showed is rather primitive and reportedly the very first algorithm ever developed to generate pseudo-random numbers back in 1950s. Then, a variety of more advanced pseudo-random number generators have been developed based on different theories. For example, we can take advantage of chaos theory. Take the logistic map, for example, which is a polynomial mapping with some very interesting behaviors. R is a constant and the mapping takes xn as input and generates xn plus as output. 
for some specific values for R, the dynamic behavior of this mapping becomes chaotic. And with whatever values of X that we begin with as our seed, the following X's will look random appearing. Let's test that with this Python code. Here we go with an R of 3.98 and begin with X of 0.1 as our seed number. Then we iterate 100 times to generate a sequence of 100 numbers. And here is the results. Now we have a sequence of numbers with no patterns and with no significant autocorrelation at any lag. So what does happen if we don't provide the seed number? For example, random function in Excel doesn't ask for a seed number. In such situations, your computer will take a number from its environment or the state of the computer system, such as the clock time, and use it as the seed number. But remember, if you want your analysis that use pseudo random numbers to be reproducible, you need to make sure to know and save the seed number and the algorithm. So we learned how to generate pseudo random numbers. We also learned pseudo random numbers are not really random. And as long as you know the algorithm and the seed number, you can exactly predict the pseudo random number sequence. That's fine and actually very useful for many science and engineering applications like the applications in my own field around hydrology and water resources. But in some fields like cryptography, truly random numbers are preferred. Then the question is, can there be something out there truly random that we can use for random number generation? Well, I don't know the answer to that question, but there are devices and tools out there that measure some natural phenomenon and interpret that as a random process. A famous one is based on quantum physics and the movement of subatomic particles. For example, you could go to the website of quantum physics lab at the Australian National University and get numbers measured by their system. We just need to keep in mind that some natural phenomena might still appear random as we don't know yet their true mechanics and governing principles. But if one day we could discover and predict their dynamics, they won't be random to us anymore.